السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Welcome back to this درس and to the study of this book الأدب المفرد concerning the prophetic morals or the morals and the manners and the etiquette and the behavior and the conduct of our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who was without doubt an uswatun hasana a fine and excellent example for everyone to follow who wishes to be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted jannah and protected from the hellfire so he is without doubt the finest of all examples and he did not come except to perfect the noble character he came to call the people to tawheed to act upon all of the rights of tawheed to give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his rights and to establish the rights between the people and between the creation today we move on to hadith number 82 that we have reached and this comes under the bab or the chapter that is entitled the excellence of the one who cares for his daughter who has been sent back home and this is really regarding the fact that even if our daughters that they get married and they leave home and then for whatever reason that they are returned maybe due to divorce or because of the death of their husband or whatever reason then there is excellence in caring for the daughter who returns back to us here we have Imam al-Bukhari bringing his chain of narration where he said that Haywa bin Shuray narrated to us and he said that Baqiya narrated to us from Bahir from Khalid, from, from Al-Miqdam bin Ma'di, Karib, that he heard, radiallahu anhu, that he heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, what you feed yourself is sadaqah for you. What you feed your child is sadaqah for you. What you feed your wife is sadaqah for you. What you feed your servant is sadaqah for you. And this hadith, it is sahih. As for its connection to the chapter heading, of course, they are, it, it is possible, of course, that they were in the original other hadith that are deemed to be weak, that were not brought under the same chapter heading. But nevertheless, this hadith is used by Imam al-Bukhari as a proof that whatever you do for your children, it is sadaqa. So if your daughter returns home and you look after her and you provide for her, then just as you feeding yourself is a sadaqa, then what you feed your child is also a sadaqa for you. What you feed your wife is a sadaqa for you. What you feed your servants is a sadaqa for you. All of it is sadaqa. And this is a tremendous hadith as we'll make clear, inshallah. So this hadith is a proof of the excellence of extending and reaching out with goodness to Muslims, male and female. So the question that you may be asking is, why would Allah, or why does Allah reward you for feeding yourself? Whilst you are the one who is in need of food and drink to survive in the first place, and that is because you intend to strengthen yourself with food and drink so that you can perform acts of obedience to Allah. Meaning that if you consume food and drink, that which Allah has given you, that which you can't do without, and the provision itself is from Allah, but if you were to eat it and drink it with the intent of making your body strong in obedience to Allah 
so that you can perform the acts of obedience, then it becomes a sadaqa. So without this sustenance, you would not be able to fulfill the wajibat, the obligations and the mustahabbat, and that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has recommended from the sunnah. So, this is the sunnah of Allah in his creation. And it is a must that we take the means provided by Allah. Meaning that the sunnah of Allah within his creation is that you need to eat and drink to give you energy and the strength to perform the acts of obedience. So it is a must that we take those means that Allah has given us with the intention of what? Not with the intention of gluttony. Not with the intent of being ungrateful. But with the pure intent of being grateful to Allah for that which Allah has given us. That Allah has provided this as a means of sustenance for us. And then we establish the intention of eating and drinking so that our bodies are strong. So that we may worship Allah. So it is the sunnah of Allah. And look at the generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His giving and his mercy and his bounty. That Allah, Allah is the one who provides for you. So you eat from that which he has provided for you. And so do your children and your wife and your parents and your relatives. Those who are near and those who are far. So for all of these that you that eat from your earnings that are halal, then you are rewarded even though it is from Allah. So it is, Allah is giving you to eat and then Allah is rewarding you for eating. Allah is giving you drink and then Allah is rewarding you for drinking. Allah is giving you food and then you feed your children with it and then Allah rewards you for that. So you can see how generous and merciful and giving and bountiful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. But yet we are so ungrateful for that which Allah has piled up in terms of reward for the one who seeks that reward. So therefore, for all that eat from your earnings, they are reward, you are rewarded for that. And it is a sadaqah from you to them. So whomsoever eats from that, then Allah rewards you for it. To earn this reward requires us to seek that reward and to hope for that reward that you seek for it and therefore you have the intention that is overarching and general that everything that you eat, drink, wear as clothing in the houses that you dwell and the riding beasts that you mount that you have an intention and you hope that they are rewardable because you will because those things meaning your food and your drink and your shelter and your clothing and, and your riding beast and your car and so on that all of them with your intention is that they will aid you upon the obedience to Allah so therefore something that is mundane that you don't really pay much attention to by changing your intention by devoting yourself to Allah, that Allah rewards you for every morsel of food that you provide for your family, that you even provide for yourself. Because now your intention is nothing but goodness and ibadah and gratitude and devotion and servitude to Allah. So therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards you, whether it be for yourself or whomsoever you provide for. All of it will be written in your scrolls of good deeds. No one loses, loses this good except an ignoramus and the one who is negligent. Imagine if you were to just focus upon ibadah to Allah, that what I'm eating, what I'm drinking. And therefore, of course, you also think about what you're eating and drinking. Because if it is for the purpose of giving you strength to worship Allah, you will not eat except halal. And likewise, you will not overfill yourselves like many people do in the month of Ramadan, such that they are too tired to pray the Tarawi prayer. Or that they eat so much that they damage their bodies. So they can't perform the tashahud sitting down 
so they need to sit on chairs. Why? Because they have not used food in the correct manner. So when it comes to Hajj, they can't perform Hajj. When it comes to uh, Salah, they can't go into Sajda. Because they have over overeaten or that they have damaged their bodies with food that Allah has provided for them that they're supposed to use for the benefit of their own servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the point is that you have good intentions and you hope and you seek the reward from Allah for yourself and for others. That you hope that Allah will reward you and Allah will reward those that you are feeding. Every good you do for another person by feeding them or by giving them, some, giving them something to drink or something to wear or some service to them, helping them, aiding them in their time of need, asking them if they need help, giving them something that will make their life better. Then all of this that you do, then in that you should seek the reward with Allah, with good intention, that he may multiply your reward for each act of goodness that you do. So in this is a proof of the expansive mercy of Allah for his weak creation from amongst the Muslims, male and female. And as for the unbelievers, the kuffar, then they will receive no reward from Allah for their good actions on the Day of Judgment, regardless of how much charity they gave or how many poor people that they helped or how much good that they did for their children or for their parents. If they are kuffar, then they will not receive any reward for that on the Day of Judgment. That is because they did not do it for Allah. That they were not grateful to Allah because that which, that, that which they were handing out to others, where did it come from? It came from Allah. It didn't come from them. So the charity that they gave was wealth that came from Allah. So then they handed it out to the people. And they did not thank Allah for giving that which they handed out. They ascribed it to themselves that we are the ones giving in charity. Where in reality it is from Allah that your wealth came, that your food came, that your clothing came, and whatever good that you did for others. It was from Allah. Allah is the one who gave to you and you gave to others, but you did not thank Allah and you did not ascribe it to Allah. Either you ascribed it to an idol or to a cross or to a prophet like Jesus or they ascribed it to an idol from the idols of the Hindu Shiva, Rama, Brahma, whichever they did not ascribe it to Allah so when Yawm al Qiyamah comes then who are they asking for reward from? because they did not ascribe it to Allah in the first place and they did not thank Allah and they were not grateful to Allah the sole creator and lord of the heavens and the earth deserving of their worship. So this is why Yawm al Qiyamah, the unbeliever will come. And no matter what good deeds he did, if he died upon disbelief and idolatry and polytheism as a mushrik or a kafir, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not reward him on Yawm al Qiyamah. And that is just and that is adal. And Allah does not oppress anyone. These people who did their good deeds on this earth, then they will receive their reward upon this earth. If they gave in charity and they ascribed that charity to themselves or to their idols or to their false gods, then what they wanted, they got on the earth. They did it for their false religion. So they have got what they wanted for their false religion. They did it because they wanted notoriety and fame. So people could say, what a generous man this is, what a generous Christian or Hindu or Buddhist or whatever he was. So khalas, he got his notoriety and his infamy upon this earth. So what he wanted, he got. So they will receive their reward in this life for whatever good they have done. So Allah gives them recompense in this world. Allah gives them good health 
well-being, safety, children, families, buildings, houses, dwellings, air to breathe, water to drink, a body that is mobile, legs to walk, eyes to see, ears to hear. So Allah gives them. In this world, their reward and their recompense. So they cannot complain, Yomul Qiyamah. Oh Allah, we did such and such a good deed. Whatever good deed that you did, you did not ascribe it to Allah. You did not say, Alhamdulillah, that all praises to Allah that Allah has given me so that I can give to others. Never. They will say, the idol gave it to me. Or the false god that they call upon gave it to them. Or that they'll claim, they'll ascribe it to their, who, 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 whom they call their Lord Jesus Christ. Whereas in reality, the one who provided for them was Allah. So they did not thank him and they did not praise him and they were not grateful to him and they did not prostrate to him and they did not bow down to him and they did not ascribe the good health that they have and the wealth that they have and the children that they have. Never once did they say this is from Allah and from nobody else. So the good deeds that they did, the good to their children, the good to their parents, the good to their neighbors, then their reward for that is in this life. Why should they ask Yawm Al-Qiyamah from Allah when they did not ascribe it to Allah? So the hereafter therefore, they will not receive except the fire. And they will be given a wretched place to remain and dwell. Because they did not believe in Allah as he commanded them. They did not believe in that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed. Though prophet after prophet was sent to them. Book after book was revealed to them. Advice after advice was given to them. And they were admonished and admonished by the people of knowledge and wisdom. They chose to take the sustenance that Allah gave them. So they took it. And they took the bounties from Allah. Then they disdained. Then they after they disdained in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they disobeyed him. They showed disdain and they disobeyed Allah and they disbelieved in him and they disbelieved in the revelation. Yet every good that came to them came from Allah. So if they gave some of that good to others, then it was from Allah. Yet they did not thank Allah. It's like a mother who raises her child through childbirth pregnancy and then childbirth and then labor and then the delivery comes and then the weaning for two years changing the clothes washing them and bathing them and raising them up until the child reaches the age of 16 and then when someone asks him how did you you know who was the one who raised you and then he names her name other than his own mother he ascribes his, the hardship that his mother went through to another woman. So know my brothers and sisters, it is just and it is right that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not reward them on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Let them take their reward in this world. Let them take their reward in this world. Barakallahu feekum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aid us and protect us and make us from the grateful servants of Allah Jalla wa Ala. وجزاكم الله خيرا والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته